Greetings, this is Peter Williams, and for week four, Latino culture, I'm going to be discussing the children's book, Drum Dream Girl, How One Girl's Courage Changed Music. The author is Margarita Enkel, and the illustrator is Rafael Lopez. And it relates to this week's topic because in the context of a children's poem, it takes place in Cuba in 1932 and gives insight into the childhood of Milo Castro Zaldariaga, who is a Chinese-African-Cuban musician. Um, as far as the book itself, it refers to Cuba as the island of music and discusses the girl who dreams drums, but she has to dream of drums in secret because on the island only, only boys are allowed to play. Um, but she continues to dream, and she eventually does play, and her sister's here, and they're very excited. They think that she is fantastic, and they want her to join their all-girl dance band. However, her father reminds her that girls are not allowed to play, but he eventually does decide to suggest her to a music teacher, and the music teacher hears her play and is amazed and decides to give her more lessons. And when he finally feels that she is ready, she has her play outdoors at a cafe at night and when everybody hears her play they sing and they dance and from that that point on uh, people in Cuba they decided that girls should be allowed to play drums too. Now how as far as how this book offers usefulness and understanding the culture uh, it does talk about various types of drums that were played such as timbales, bongo drums, and conga drums and it does st stress the, the traditional taboo that, bo that only boys were allowed to play drums. Um, it does make statements about where other male drummers were playing, which were at outdoor cafes that looked like gardens. Um, throughout the book, through, through pictures and through description, it also gives you an idea of what, what it was like in Cuba, such as the architecture, the clothing that people were wearing, um, it makes mention of palm trees, and it also discusses animals such as parrots and flamingos. Um, and then when it talks about the festival, it does make mention in, in the text as far as the, the costumes and people wearing masks, and it shows this in, in the pictures as well. Um, when it makes mention of her sisters in the picture, you can see the different types of instruments that they like to play, which include a guitar, a stand-up bass, and a trombone. Um, as far as how this book would be good to introduce to library programming, initially, right off the bat, I, th I think this would be a great uh, story time book for, for a certain story time event. Um, if a library wanted to add to this, to add activities and make it more of, more of a program, um, they, they could present the drums that are discussed in the text, and they could give a presentation on how they're played, and then they could give children the opportunity to play those drums through music games. Like, let's say if they want an activity where it's like call and response or clapping, um, and what they could also do is they could also give a presentation on different types of masks that would have been used at a festival in Cuba in 1932 and also have an opportunity for children to make their own masks and paint them and they could even wear them and maybe even incorporate that back into the music aspect after they make their masks, you know, give them an opportunity to play the music games with the drums. But yep, absolutely. I, thought that this was a very good book for children and I think it's going to be really it would be really good to ha have it in a story time event to give a little bit of insight into what what life was like in Cuba in 1932. And as far as the information about M Milo Castro Zaldariaga, it doesn't mention her directly by name in the story itself, but it does have a historical note after the book. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Take care.